So to start off, how, how have you settled into Los Angeles life? Um, how are things going over there? So I'm loving it. It's very, very hot, which is something my English self and being in New York, I'm not really used to. So that was like a massive jump. And then obviously being with the team and all their experience and all their talent has been just incredible to learn from them every day. So take us back to, to before you got drafted. You're from the UK, you're playing soccer in the United States in New York. What led to the decision to stay in the United States and play in the NWSL instead of going back home to play in England? I was lucky enough to train with a couple pro teams while I was in England. So that gave me like a fantastic option and maybe something I can revisit in the future. But for as of right now, like I loved being in America. I loved having my team, loving my team and all the achievements that we had was because of that beautiful team environment that we created at Austria. So I just felt it was too soon to go back to England and I just wanted to explore to see if I could even get drafted. I wasn't sure if I was gonna, and then luckily I did. Um, and then I wanted to finish out my degree, which hopefully I graduated in May, cross fingers. <laughs> so you're in kind of a unique situation, not only a rookie, but also being on a new expansion team. Right, so Angel City joined the NWSL this season, um, and it's an expansion team where even veteran players like Chris and Press, like Didi Harachich, and veteran coaches like Freya Coom are really adjusting to and learning how to mesh together. What has that experience been like for you? I think it's been incredible because no one really knew how it was going to be. Obviously, San Diego Wave are an expansion team as well, and there we played them a couple of times, so we've seen where we're at and I think it's been a good balance between finding the right people and bringing a culture together because obviously we can make this our own you know we can build it from the ground up and I feel like we've really wanted to do that and we have like you said talented people experienced people in the team and the coaching staff are phenomenal so I think that in a couple months to come hopefully we can see where we're at actually on the pitch because I feel like off the pitch we've broadened our horizons with women in LA playing football or women in America playing football but now we want to see how far we can go actually on the pitch. How did your time at Hofstra um, under under the direction of head coach Simon Rudioff kind of prepare you for that transition to the to the big leagues? We've always played fantastic teams in pre-season and luckily been able to get to NCAA like first second round. We've played you know these big teams where we have been the underdog and I feel like that relays to Angel City where we are the underdog. And when we play like USC and Stanford, like I've been playing against a couple of the girls that, you know, Sophia Smith against Portland. So I just think Simon has prepared us a lot in the games that we've played in preseason. The international players and preseason and the NCAA games has really prepared me personally for big challenges and a lot of pressure. And I think I, thrive on pressure so hopefully I do in the future. What are the fans meant to you and the team as you work to make Angel City a strong contender in the league? They're our backbone of every game. I think we can hear them no matter how big the stadium is. Like we, we went to Portland away and we could hear the drums, we could hear the chants. Like it's fantastic. They've been following Angel City even before Angel City was an NWSL team for the last two years and they're they're just like their own little community and they follow us everywhere and they're just fantastic. And they're like having a 12th player on the team. Thank you so much to Angel City FC player Miri Taylor for joining us on Sportsbeat today. For Sportsbeat, I'm Maddie Perkins.